What's going on everybody? It's Cowboy Chuck. We are continuing our squad basic series today. Um, today we're going to be focusing on the original map mode that was created for squad and that's called advanced and secure. The biggest difference with advanced and secure compared to other map modes is that you know where all the objectives are so there's no fog of war per se that's an advantage from the perspective of well it's almost it's a it's a yin and yang type of thing um where it's an advantage and it's a disadvantage it's an advantage because all squads understand where they need to go and in from a sequence perspective which objective is the next one up so as one team one squad is capturing one objective you can already have a squad positioned on the next objective so you can start capping or capturing that object objective as quickly as possible and with the new squad mechanics the more people you have on the cap zone the faster it will go all right so that's the advantage the disadvantage is twofold. <clears throat> Number one, the enemy knows where all of your objectives are. So they know where you're going to be, quote unquote, coming from based upon the orientation of your main base. Um, biggest mistake people make is pushing a attack objective in a direct line from their previous objective. That's the most obvious place to look. Okay, so... What do you need to do with uh, advanced and secure? As like I said, there's two big disadvantages <clears throat> from the opposing team's perspective. Number one, they know where your objective, uh, like the attack and defense objective, they understand which direction you're going to be coming from. And because the objective is known, they can tell by looking at the map whether or not you've captured that objective or not. So they can decide whether they want to push or not. Um, and then there's one other huge disadvantage in that you know based upon the vehicle types that each faction has, you can almost predict where the enemy is going to be. So, for example, we're going to use our Basra AAS V1. So this advanced and secure version 1. This is US versus MEA. You can see the most common objectives on Albazra are, from an advanced and secure, uh, and secure perspective, are Alcora, out to the west, west outskirts, refinery, mosque, suburbs, courtyard, and island suburbs. Okay. From a U.S. perspective, <clears throat> getting to Alcora is super easy, and getting to refinery and west outskirts is super easy with the helos. This map has helos but keep in mind this is where that situational awareness piece that we've talked about in the past uh, comes into play if you have a helo and can get to a certain point on the map the enemy has a vehicle of some form that's either comparable or has the same speed coefficient where they can get to the same exact location on the map as you so for instance if you can push forward to their second or third objective they can do the exact same thing so on some servers they allow rushing which is getting to your opponent's first objective and preventing them from capturing that point on the playground servers we do not allow that on advanced and secure um, for randomized advanced and secure we try to police it as best as possible uh, but anyone that's played randomized advanced and secure can predict where the first uh, objectives are going to be and the way you do that is very simple <clears throat> if you look at the orientation of your objective so you look down here you can see our first objective is island suburbs that's to the north northeast from our main okay the same objective for the opposing team is traditionally it's about 70% of the time from from what I've seen possibly more is going to be the exact opposite of you so if yours is going north northeast theirs is probably going to go south southwest right they're going to move opposite of one another and then they'll slowly converge back towards center so 
you already know by looking at this map as an MEA faction leader or squad mate on this, you already know Alcor is going to be the first objective, even if it wasn't advanced and secure. Okay. <clears throat> also, because of map orientation, look where their main base is. The closest objective to U.S. Maine is one of two spots. It's either here on Alcora or it's all the way here at VCP. So, <clears throat> so anyway, that is something to take a, to think about per se is just understanding where the objectives could be or where their likely positioning is going to be. Now, from an advanced and secure perspective, like I said, you need to understand where they're coming from. So let's just jump in admin cam really quick. This one won't take long because it is advanced and secure. We'll jump into admin cam by going shift P, pushing spacebar to go up, shift W to go fly forward. All right. Like I said, because the enemy has helo access, they're going to be able to get to refinery and drop down and get a fob position pretty quickly, right? So that means you, as the MEA squad leader, you need to get either your, your helo and insert over here at refinery, or you need to get a squad positioned somewhere over here on the south side of refinery to push in. You know you got to get to island suburbs, so maybe you can take two squads and push them up along this side right here, or just drop off one or two people at island suburbs and then take the rest of the squad and push it up to refinery to try and negate the enemy's approach into this objective. You could position, you could take one or two people there, pop a rally like over here in this building, and then push up into these complexes right here just to try and negate the U.S. team establishing a position. If they don't push refinery, which would surprise me if they didn't, that means they're going to probably push up into this area right here. Uh, this is north outskirts. They push up into this area, that gives them a spawn point to push west outskirts as well as push towards refinery. And using these buildings as cover, you can push into the complex. You've got tree line here. There's a couple holes inside the fences uh, where if you can get a rally over on the north side as US, you can push in on the north side as well. Um, so there's a couple different attack angles here, but just understanding speed to objective based upon vehicle type for advanced and secure does negate uh, the ability for you to capture your early objectives comfortably, okay? Um, the most common push for any faction on this map is West Outskirts because it's a straight line from their main base right there. It's a straight line right to West Outskirts. Um, it only requires you to cross over one bridge, um, and you can establish a fob, like I said, in north outskirts or anywhere in the west outskirts space. You're most likely going to get somebody to push up into this area right here, right where this little J-hook bend is. Someone's going to push up with a lodgy there. So just be aware of that. <clears throat> and from, from my perspective, as far as attacking slash defending, use your fob creation marks, right? So if you can get a fob over here, like in this general area, if you put one here, then that still gives you the ability to put something over here in the outskirts space, right? You can put some, you know, maybe you put the radio back over here, and that still gives you the ability to put maybe your, maybe your hab in that building, right? And then with a radio over here, you could potentially... Um, actually, what I would probably do is this. I would probably put the radio back here. Um, if I put one here on out on there, then I would probably put a radio here, right? <clears throat> now I have the ability to come over here to refinery, right? And I can put another one over here at refinery. That's the trick with the fob creation pieces is making sure you have yourself positioned to where you can provide coverage. If you're the insurgent faction, you have a huge advantage because you can put two spawn points per radio place. But traditional factions, and even including your regular militia, 
uh, you only 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 get one team spawn point called a hab or a hideout. So, understanding positioning and fobs on this map from an advanced and secure perspective is critical in order in order for you to be able to defend these outer perimeter uh, objectives because you know the you the opposing attacking team is going to push it directly right off the bat. They're going to come that way and they're going to come this way right and then once they establish this position here then they're going to slowly they're probably going to push up into here this move marker here and they're going to get probably put a fob there because think about it they're going to put a fob back here on our core somewhere we'll just put one here for sake of argument right <clears throat> you can see it's outside of the fob radius even if they push it up into Alcora a little bit into the center it's still going to give them the ability to put a fob over here at poppy farm which is what this complex is called if they put a fob here in poppy farm you can see that basically blocks them from west outskirts on the west side that's why i was telling you the most likely position they're going to put it is in this little j hook area right here or up here in this north northern area it's going to be one of these two areas because they're going to drop one in poppy and they're going to likely drop one in alcora they may not drop one on alcora initially but they likely will because they'll put that as a mortar position that's the low, most common position for uh, mortars on Al Basra. <clears throat> the next common location is putting a radio up in this complex here. And if you put your fob here, oops, sorry, wrong building. Actually, yeah, I know that's the right building. You put it here and you'll put your mortar position here, right there. With that position there, you can basically reach the majority of Al Basra that's going to be inside of the objective. So just being aware of those positions relative to where the enemy can place mortars will help you understand the attack angles they're going to be coming from. So like I said, refinery, west outskirts are going to be the two initial pushes. They're going to push these two objectives right off the bat because if they can push those two objectives, right, they can hold you off refinery and by holding you off refinery, that prevents you from capturing mosque and south suburbs. If they position themselves on west outskirts and get position and, and like they form basically a defensive line like right here and prevent you from getting inside of this area right here, then that means these people right here coming from Alcora have the ability to push over and try to get to courtyard and south suburbs and make your life difficult. So just, just a point of emphasis to think about with regards to Alcora, understanding the, this is where that situational awareness comes in relative to the map and relative to the faction. First thing you should do as a squad leader is open up this vehicle map, click it so it stays static for a few extra seconds and look through and see what vehicles they get if they don't get helos and you're the mea or insurgent faction that means you know with a high level of confidence you can get to west outskirts and refinery before they can if they have helos you know without with 100 percent uh assurance that they can get to refinery and outskirts before you because of the simple factor of the helo speed to objective based upon vehicle type and faction type so hopefully that helps you out understanding some of the challenges um, with alcora the other thing you have to think about when you're positioning your uh positioning fobs for alcora is where you're going to position your habs because of the new design of habs it makes it difficult for you to place habs inside of buildings because they have that canopy now so keep that in mind when you're trying to find a spot um, there's a few buildings in here that are really good for that um, they are two-story buildings and if you go inside of them you can see what i'm talking about so inside of here this is not a good room to put one because it only has you can get out these square windows right here but you're wide open to fire right here in these windows, right? 
So that's not the best building. But if you come over to some of these other buildings and you start doing some investigation and you start digging inside, they're decent buildings to look at, you know, to think about. Like, here's a decent one right here. You could put one here in this building and it's relatively hidden and it gives you a couple of egress points out. Now, granted, anyone that looks down this road is going to be able to see it, but you know, it's not a bad place to put, put a hab. So just start thinking about things like that, um, where you can position them based upon the map itself and then go from there, figure out what works for your team, right? You know, putting them in these buildings is always a challenge. Just got to be careful where you place them, think about it, plan it out, and then make your decision and roll with it. And if it works, it works. If it doesn't work, have an alternate plan ready to go. Um, but just think about those things when you're positioning your fobs. Do your fob creation marks to plan. Think about where the enemy can come from. Um, the beauty and the, the bad part about Al Basra is it's very hard to move up onto an objective without being seen from outside the city. Inside the city, there's tons of opportunity to use cover to move from building to building and minimize your exposure to direct fire. But anybody that's coming from outside the city, even if it's from your your MEA faction, you know, like you made it out here and you did something with one of your vehicles or you did some mining and stuff like that, getting back to the city, you are 100% exposed. There is no cover out there. You can see it's a vast expanse of desert. You'll get some cover with some of the dunes, but eventually you will be exposed. So... Hopefully you found this piece of information about Al Basra interesting, um, as well as also with regards to advance and secure, understanding speed to objective relative to faction and vehicle access. Um, what we'll do is we'll start taking a deeper dive into some of the other maps where that can also uh, have a impact so we'll, we'll kind of go alphabetically we start we'll start off with Al Basra and then I guess the next map up would be Balea. Let me see. Yeah, Al Basra. Oh, Anvil. We'll do Anvil next and then Balea. So this was the first one in a series of map-specific modes, uh, map-specific, uh, I guess you would say, guides and understanding um, relative to map mode and, and faction and speed to objectives. So hopefully you found this interesting. Again, my name is Cowboy Chuck. I'm on Twitch. Traditionally, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Saturday, starting around the 9.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time time frame. Um, <clears throat> occasionally, I do have to take time away for family-related events, but I usually uh, post those notifications. If I can't go online, I'll post them on Twitter and also in our community Discord. <clears throat> but it's, uh, if you drop a follow and uh, like and subscribe on these videos, you'll also find out when... I add more videos. So the next one that's coming up will be, uh, I'll probably post it later today or tomorrow, talking about, um, or at least providing you uh, highlights over the last week or so. Um, and then the next, next one, like I said, that we'll do is Anvil. So until next time, we'll see you. Have a good one. Stay safe. Later.